could the news be giving us a head up that the Ashtar are coming and that these are the end times? And could the Omarion variant have something to do with this? What about this game featuring your boy David Bowie? Let's look at the connections and connect some dots. So here you are, the stranger in Omicron, conqueror of demons. A long time ago, I was a human being like you. A demon surprised me in my apartment. He killed both my wife and me. Take this to the edge of time. Take this to the edge of time. We are the very first lovers. You're not the first video game player to get your soul trapped in this dimension. The survival of your soul is at stake. The only way to save your soul is to kill Astaroth. But nobody knows where he hides. Oh, Phil, I was so scared. A demon came here looking for you. He was really angry. He said he wanted your soul. I must go. May Vigramuka guide your steps. So here you are, the stranger in Omicron, conqueror of demons. Dakabar told me much about your exploits. You're not the first video game player to get your soul trapped in this dimension, but you're certainly the first to stay alive so long. They're now in Astaroth's reservoir of souls. Astaroth is a real demon in demonology called the Great Duke of Hell, also called Astarte, Ishtar, also where you get Isis, many of the Queen Mother Goddesses, just about all of the Queen Mother Goddesses that is, um, they all stem from one idea and that is actually the fallen angel dressed in drag. And you also have the Ashtar Command and those who are into New Age are very familiar with the Ashtar Command and their connection to uh, the whole idea of coming to earth and enlightening man and bringing man to a, state, a status of godhood, a status of deity, a level of understanding that will put him on par with the gods. Then there's the understanding that many people have of Oma, Omai or Ami having to do with Omega or being a lowercase version of the uppercase Omega, so we're told, the official narrative.
Well, the WHO named it after a QMG, or the WHO named it after a QMG. A devil in drag is what we call a QMG, a queen mother goddess. It appears to ancient people as a warrior priestess, temple goddess, prostitute. It's a deceiving spirit that's actually a devil that inhabited women primarily and could mimic the, sup the superficial characteristics of a woman. From Anana to Isis, Lilith, Oshan, Athena, Diana, Jezebel, the spirit is infamous and well known around the world. It is believed that the fallen angels were the first to utilize cosmic cosmetics and to cross dress and use this cleverly wicked disguise as a royal magical woman in order to tempt and trick unwitting civilizations by impressing them with magic and blinding them with science and trickery. And here's the proof of the official narrative. I know the official narrative. I just don't believe the official narrative. Like I don't believe it about a lot of things. But here is the official narrative. They say that this is how they named it. Um, in order to keep the public from being up in arms, they decided to use Greek letters. Right. Ain't that sweet of them to do? Why, thank you, who? Uh-oh. Pleased to meet you. Can you guess my name? Can you guess who? Interesting enough that the group, The Who, also named a song or wanted to give homage to this Queen Mother Goddess. They gave it up for Athena. You can go back and look at these lyrics and peruse through them. You'll see that their songwriter's secret approved. However, the other Who that we're all forced to have to listen to, uh, they gave it up to the mother of Cronus, as we'll see in a moment, in a few moments. But let's look at a few other things and connect a few more dots before we get to that part of the plot. We're bombarded with the exoteric narrative all day, every day. But here's the esoteric narrative, a.k.a. the unofficial story understood by the truthers, free thinkers, and the reformed New Agers who discern the spirit of a thing, whether it's on record as a fact or not. Omi is the lowercase or diminutive form of Omega, in the book of Revelation 22 and 13, it says, I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Omega means end. So Kron, same as C-R-O-N, is from Kronos or Kronos. Vowels interchange quite a bit in ancient languages. It's a big part of the spell of spelling. It's a Greek spirit, which they used to call gods. The gods and titans were really the fallen angels and their offspring playing the role of gods. The word chronological comes from this spirit that exercised power over time. So it's a coded reference to end times. It's not as silly as our trusted officials and fact check checkers propose for it to be. In classic brotherhood fashion, it also may have more than one meaning as we look at the spelling rules and go from Omi to Umi.
better to die a thousand deaths than end up there. Astaroth was locked up in a cage for thousands of years by Kushalane, the hero of the Cobalt Wars. Now that he's free, the demon needs to build up his power again because it dwindled over the centuries. To do so, he needs souls, thousands of souls. He derives his power from suffering souls. They endure infinite tortures in the reservoir. It is this endless suffering that will enable him to recover his former power. The souls here are grey and withered. You can't get much power from them. The juiciest souls are in your dimension. Astaroth created the video game called Omicron in order to capture them, the game you're playing at this very moment. He uses Omicron to attract souls. He asks players to put their spirit into a body in order to enter our dimension. As soon as the soul has come here, it only takes a demon to catch it and take it to Astaroth who condemns it for all eternity, which very nearly happened to you. No, unfortunately. As long as your soul is a prisoner in Omicron, you run the risk of being caught by a demon and thrown into the reservoir. The only way to save your soul is to kill Astaroth. But nobody knows where he hides not to mention how to go about killing him. Let me think. There might be a way to find out more about Astaroth. There's an old parchment that comes from the Cobalt Wars. It mentions Astaroth. Perhaps it says something about how to destroy the demon. The parchment is in the central library of Omicron under strict guard at the top of the pyramid. Go to the library and gather together all the information you can find on Astaroth. The survival of your soul is at stake. Legate Reshev protects everything that dates from the Cobalt Wars. He still hopes to discover some secrets of the ancient art. All access to these documents is forbidden. The library is in the Lahora sector. You'll need a pass to get there. You'll find one somewhere in this house. I placed Jenna at the head of Phalanx V to replace Namtar the traitor. I asked her to give you all the help you need. Something tells me you can help us achieve our goal. An old legend recounts that only a nomad soul can hunt the demons out of Omicron. You may be the one we have been waiting for. I must go. Now the binary tides are turning. May Vigramuka guide your steps. Wake up, people of Omicron. Reshev and his corrupt government are lulling you to sleep in order to control you better. They have transformed you into puppets that are manipulated by Ix and the demons. Join the Awakened Ones and rise up to fight for your freedom. Together, we can win. All the inhabitants of Omicron are now awakened. The trusts have been destroyed. The last skirmishes are ending in the streets. We have had an extraordinary victory which our descendants will recount from generation to generation, and we owe this victory to you, Nomad Soul. You helped us win back our freedom. For us all, you are now a legendary hero, like Kushalane before you. I shall try to take on material form again and leave this accursed network that has kept me prisoner for centuries. Thank you for all you have done for us, Nomad Soul. We'll never forget you. 
You have accomplished your destiny. Here's yet another official narrative provided to help guide us goofy goobers toward the understanding that the authorities want us to have. Yes, Billy Goats was the boss of the company that provided the game system, but no, him didn't know nothing about the game or its development. I was born at night, not last night. And if that ain't cap, I can't rap. Several smoking guns have already been discovered surrounding Mr. Bill, Ill Bill, and his uh, dealings with everything from Planned Parenthood to the pandemic and his apparent understanding that it was going to happen. It was an inevitability, not just a possibility or a probability, but something that he knew was going to happen. So when many things were announced in 1999 as the powers that should not be saw that as a year that could be uh, sent around the world to give their members the heads up that it was a code that we're now marking the new age, the new era, out with the old world, and we're coming in with the new world order. At the head of that new world order, there will be a world leader. We're still in the process of establishing that world order, but we are further ahead in their plans of the great work of that establishment of the new world order than we've ever been. And technology plays a huge part to comment on your participation in, in this collaboration? Either of you. I, well, I think first we'd like to thank you very much, uh, uh, Edos, for inviting us to be part of this uh, enterprise. I think it's uh, fascinating. Um, I think it's the logical extension. The reason I've been writing music and uh, songs for movies for years, but uh, I think the idea of developing a soundtrack idea for a game is really quite unusual. The idea of writing songs specifically for a game is, uh, is really a compelling factor and it's the one thing that we wanted to do and also they didn't uh, they didn't give us a preconceived idea of what we should do we were left to our own devices when people see this symbolism they don't realize that it's speaking directly about the idea of the fallen angels setting up a brotherhood and within that brotherhood exalting certain men to be their mouthpieces to be their ministers who will teach their way to the masses. Bowie was an example of one of those men, but he was not alone. Taken here from this article from religiondispatches.org, it says that for those with eyes to see, there had always been a nimbus of religiosity around Bowie, whose metaphoric language is shot through with spiritual symbolism and religious references. A Talmudic study of his lyrics, cross-referenced with a close psychoanalytic reading of his life, reveals an inveterate seeker, hungry for gnosis, the hermetic wisdom that will unriddle the metaphysical questions that nag him. Bowie's pilgrimage has taken him through Buddhism to the alien saviors of science fiction and flying saucer theology and mystical traditions ranging from Kabbalism to English magician scholars such as Aleister Crowley and A.E. Waite, to the dime store occultism of Dion Fortune's psychic self-defense, to the Maronite Christian mysticism of Khalil Gibran, whose the prophet, like Herman Hesse's Siddhartha, was a pickup line staple at 60's love ends. So this is part of his job as a disseminator of uh, the New Age philosophies. That's what he does. He's not a, uh, a great vocalist. Um, he's not a particularly strong uh, singer, but his job is to disseminate these New Age and metaphysical ideas and make them sound plausible to the average person, to bring the average person into the initiation of the Brotherhood, which is all about witchcraft and sorcery at the end of the day, conjuring. They bring in new people because they need new bodies for the spirits that guide and inspire them to inhabit. While they use the old ones up, they drain them. Boy is also noted for saying, 
I always had a repulsive sort of need to be something more than human. Bowie confesses this in George Tremlett's book, David Bowie, Living on the Brink. I thought, F that. I want to be a Superman. So becoming Ziggy on stage and off from 72 through 74, completed his transfiguration into the doomed alien savior of his dreams, a volatile mix of Nietzschean will-to-power fantasies and a martyr complex. His Bengali-like manager's strategy of limiting media access to the divinity fixed the image of Bowie as aloof and otherworldly in the public mind. By the New Wave era, says Anne Magnuson, a bold-faced name on New, New York's downtown scene in the late 70s and early 80s, Bowie had turned into something godlike to certain kids who loved the weird, the edgy, the arty, and the glam. By that point, he had become defiled. End quote. Hence, he was the perfect choice to do the soundtrack and also be a key figure and character in a game called Omicron, the Nomad Soul, a nomad Again, spelling spell trick, spin it backwards. It's a daemon, and daemon is the ancient pronunciation and at one time spelling of the word we now spell D-E-M-O-N. Remember the vowels interchange. Also a nomad is a wanderer. Look on uh, the internet and you'll find daemon nomad an entertainer using the duality double name trick. There's the uh, well-known spelling of Old English Damon is D-A-E-M-O-N. We spell it D-E-M-O-N now, but it was also once spelled D-A-M-O-N. So this word nomad is the word Damon, and the spelling spell uh, architects know this quite well. Sort of the people who put the game out. They understand this. This is why you have the prevalence in the game of demons and yet it's called Nomad Soul. They knew what they were doing. So folks found out about this game a few days ago. Video gamers started tripping and trying to figure out what was really up with the game. The Nomad Soul. You can read about it on Wikipedia. The Nomad Soul, known as Omicron, The Nomad Soul in North America, is an adventure game developed by Quantic Dream and published by Eidos Interactive. It was released for Microsoft Windows in 1999 and Dreamcast in 2000. The player can engage in unarmed and armed combat, explore the three-dimensional environment of Omicron City, and talk with non-player characters to progress the story. It follows an investigation into a case of serial killings, which unravels the supernatural truth behind the city's ancient history. And David Bowie provides the soundtrack and also plays a key character in the video game. And the tailor-made song that plays, written by Bowie, when you actually first see the city, that is um, the name of the game, Omarion, when you first see that city, this song plays. I'll read the lyrics. Song Write a Secret, Certified. New Angels of Promise is the name of the song. New Angels of Promise, We Despair. We are the dead dreams. We take the blame. Take us to the edge of time. Take us to the edge of time. The edge of something is also known as what? The end of something. So here we have in the lyrics a confirmation that again the official narrative <laughs> is certainly a lie because they want to steer you away from having any notion that it relates to the edge of time. But yet within the game itself, if you will, the theme song of the game, within those lyrics, you have definite evidence that the edge of time or the end of time or end times is indeed what's being signified by the title. Because in those end times, what these brotherhood builders believe is that, yes, their ancient gods will arise again and that those ancient gods will, once again, beguile and take over men 
but this time that they'll be successful in recreating themselves or reincarnating themselves through mankind like they tried to do in Genesis 6. Genetically inserting themselves into humankind. So this points back to a lot of things that people have been speculating about, myself and others, concerning the sting. Let's read. We are the fabulous lovers. Remember their punishment was because they wanted to be such lovers of women. The daughters of men that they found beautiful in Genesis 6. I am a blind man. She is my eyes. Why? Because again, the symbolism here, I am a blind man and she is my eyes. The symbolism here is that once you have become the vessel for these beings, they see through you. Suspicious minds. You didn't feel us coming in this lonely crowd. It's always time. They are always at play. The spirits are always at work. Suspicious minds, you didn't feel us coming in this lonely crowd. They have snuck up on mankind more than one time. New angels of promise, we despise. Don't fall apart now. We are the silent ones. New angels of promise. Again, aligning with that new age idea and the false promises that are made by their God, whether he disguises himself as one of the ancient gods or goddesses. Take us to the edge of time. Take us to the edge of time. We are the tabular lovers. We listen to the storm. Suspicious minds. You didn't feel us coming in this lonely crowd. It's always time. New angels of promise. We despair. We are the dead dreams. We take the blame. Blame it on the boogie. Blame it on the devil. The devil made me do it. Said um, Flip Wilson when he donned that dress. And that was his little famous thing was putting on that dress and being Geraldine and saying, the devil made me buy this dress. Or as it just plainly and flatly says on the album covers where he did that routine and sold it to a lot of families. A lot of family houses had that album in there. All it said on the front, it was him in the dress. And it said, the devil made me do it. Very poignant. This brotherhood double speak is always present, just as it is here in the lyrics to this song by the artist David Bowie from the album, Ours, H-O-U-R-S. Again, a double, sometimes triple entendre when we're dealing with the brotherhood. Ours, meaning things that belong to us. <laughs> they believe that the time is theirs. The time belongs to them. And also ours and horizon and horoscope is where they say we get Horus from. And Horus is a chief representative from the Egyptian pantheon of these same beings disguising themselves as gods and goddesses, coming to a people, beguiling those people, making them think that we're here to aid you like gods or angels. In the ancient times, it was gods that they appeared as. In modern times, they come and appear as angels. The scripture tells us that even Lucifer or even Satan and his crew can disguise themselves as angels, as beings of light. And this is another theory that writes that uh, 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 rides right into the Ashtaroth theme in the game. Because the Ashtar command is seen by New Agers today as being the um, beings, you know, some see them as aliens, some see them as angels in the New Age world. None of them see them as what they truly are, nomads looking for a body, looking for a vessel to inhabit. But they believe that the Ashtar command, again, named after Ashtaroth on the sly, they believe that this Ashtar command, these uh, 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 these enlightened beings were the same enlightened beings that enlightened uh, uh, the Buddha and that taught Christ, they will tell you, and that enlightened civilizations going throughout antiquity and that they want to enlighten mankind 
in these contemporary times, but, or in the present day, but they say that mankind is not ready yet. And we have to get ourselves to a particular point where we will be able to receive the doctrine that they want to teach mankind. And that point is an anti-Christian overall perspective. Because the only people that will cry foul about the things that they are going to teach men would be the Christians who would see them as deceiving spirits or as these false angels of light warned about in scripture. So not only is the idea of some sort of alchemical transformation by way of medication being pushed nowadays through Omarion. Got an icebox where my heart used to be. But also they're pushing this idea that these ancient gods are on the way back. Perhaps once they feel like that they have mankind properly mentally, spiritually, and emotionally conditioned, as well as physically conditioned, then they will be able to return. And the physical conditioning is likely occurring not simply through the sting, but through the other thing. The biochemical warfare that they've been planning for a long time could have always been about trying to change us using that old alchemical idea from men to what they view as gods. And I just spent a good amount of time explaining to you what their gods really are. So what do they really want to turn men into? Hence the cover of the video game and the title of it. Let's move on. And not trying to be funny, but these folks with more power, more access, and more money, they're more able to find out what it is that you and I might think is a thing, and they can find out for sure what it really is. And now Bowie released his final album on his birthday and two days before he died was that opening track on that album a coda for a stellar career re referencing a life's work, his demons, and impending death. The album came as a great surprise and was full of hints of his condition, but news of death so soon afterwards came as a far greater shock. But what of this track, his longest, second only to 1976's Station to Station, and the track that they're talking about is Black Star. Black star is another word for dwarf star or, or dying star. And neatly, this could be references to Major Tom and his first big hit, Space Oddity. Bowie was also a huge fan of Elvis Presley, with whom he shared his birthday. He was also obsessed with this coincidence, and perhaps Elvis is also referenced in the star chorus. The ritualistic elements of the lyrics, including the solitary candle, we talked about that, in the songwriter secret video, may also refer to his old interest in the works of Aleister Crowley, not unusual for many rock stars of the 1970s. So the song, mischievously, is full of questions as well as answers. Is it a villa of all men, or, as in the official lyrics, a villa of Orman? This is what he originally wrote, and this is from songbar.com. No, I don't think that most Death, Todd Quali, and Marcus Garvey knew this particular meaning or degree of understanding of Black Star. Which is, again, to my point, different access, different status level, different understanding. Now, speaking of this lyric of Orman, it's possibly a Norwegian village. Also, it's Norwegian for serpent. But it's been speculated that it's a reference to where his first girlfriend Hermione Farthingale lived when she left him in 1969. Duality all over the place. Hermione is a feminized version of Hermes, the spirit of duality, also known astrologically as Gemini. Then you've got her name, Hermione Farthing, a penny or a quarter, an old measurement of a little bit of money, ale. So, 
very interesting name that his girlfriend had, uh, and it's very interesting that it's noted that she left him in 69. So my experience with computers does go back a long time. Um, I've been working on the internet now for about two years and actually six months in operation uh, on the internet. And I've been producing art on, on the computer uh, since 1994. So I, I did my first uh, series of things. So I have, uh, I can mouse about. And by the way, the Umi or Ami of Kron is Gaia. Doesn't it look like Earth that he's trying to look like? It also looks like, yes, like Metropolis, as if he has a city on his head. The mind control uh, movie Metropolis is often used in symbolism, especially using the stars to convey that they're under mind control, um, that you know, they're city heads, city girls, I bet you are probably victims of the same mind control. And it's been used um, time and time again in films and in videos and in promotional things for various artists, especially for, for female singers that are acquired to be the queen. Uh, Whitney Houston so famously called herself the queen of the night as she dressed like it too and did it too. And the, the Burma relief that I just uh, showed a picture so back is actually called the queen of the night. And in the movie Metropolis, a ritual is undergone where a a woman is transformed, mind controlled, and transformed from being a woman into a uh, Robotron inhabited with a demon spirit. And this is also found in the theme of this video game, Omarion. And uh, in the whole idea of this medical alchemy, so whenever they regurgitate imagery from this film, it is to signify a blending of the worlds, the spiritual realm and the material realm, the technical realm and the organic realm, and the idea of alchemical transformation through medicine, technology, and magic, their brave new world personified in this video game. And in the name of the video game itself, we find an indication of their timing or their plan of action when they're going to enact this brave new world or when they expect for this brave new world to be made manifest in these days and times which many recognize quite plainly to be the end times. What video games do you play and which of them inspired you to do this project? My son is the games merchant in our household. Um, I've, I've played games. I've played, uh, of course I've played Tomb Raider. And uh, like every other hot-blooded male, I was in love with Lara. And uh, momentarily, then I realized that it was not real. It's just not real. This is definitely the end of a millennium. The idea of actually doing a soundtrack for anything that's involved in, in a, a computer orientation was uh, a real magnet for me. And we approached it as though we were doing a film. What we were trying to do more than anything else is provide an emotional heart to the game. 
as the one thing that I did find going through the games that I viewed before we started work, is uh, a lot of the games have a cold emotional drive. The Metropolis Connection tells me that the Rona is a catalyst being used to eventually transform humans into perfect beings for the devil's new world, which is another thinly veiled concept found within this game. So here you are, the stranger in Omicron, conqueror of demons. Dagobah told me much about your exploits. You're not the first video game player to get your soul trapped in this dimension, but you're certainly the first to stay alive so long. They're now in Astaroth's reservoir of souls. Better to die a thousand deaths than end up there. Astaroth was locked up in a cage for thousands of years by Kushalane, the hero of the Cobalt Wars. Now that he's free, the demon needs to build up his power again because it dwindled over the centuries. To do so, he needs souls. Thousands of souls. He derives his power from suffering souls. They endure infinite tortures in the reservoir. It is this endless suffering that will enable him to recover his former power. The souls here are grey and withered. He can't get much power from them. The juicier souls are in your dimension. Astaroth created the video game called Omicron in order to capture them, the game you're playing at this very moment. He uses Omicron to attract souls. He asks players to put their spirit into a body in order to enter our dimension. As soon as the soul has come here, it only takes a demon to catch it and take it to Astaroth who condemns it for all eternity, which very nearly happened to you. No, unfortunately. As long as your soul is a prisoner in Omicron, you run the risk of being caught by a demon and thrown into the reservoir. The only way to save your soul is to kill Astaroth. But nobody knows where he hides not to mention how to go about killing him. Let me think. There might be a way to find out more about Astaroth. There's an old parchment that comes from the Cobalt Wars. It mentions Astaroth. Perhaps it says something about how to destroy the demon. The parchment is in the central library of Omicron under strict guard at the top of the pyramid. Go to the library and gather together all the information you can find on Astaroth. The survival of your soul is at stake. Legate Reshev protects everything that dates from the Cobalt Wars. He still hopes to discover some secrets of the ancient art. All access to these documents is forbidden. The library is in the Lahora sector. You'll need a pass to get there. You'll find one somewhere in this house. I placed Jenna at the head of Phalanx V to replace Namtar the traitor. I asked her to give you all the help you need. Something tells me you can help us achieve our goal. An old legend recounts that only a nomad soul can hunt the demons out of Omicron. You may be the one we have been waiting for. I must go. Now the binary tides are turning. May Vigramuka guide your steps. Wake up, people of Omicron. 
Reshev and his corrupt government are lulling you to sleep in order to control you better. They have transformed you into puppets that are manipulated by X and the demons. Join the Awakened Ones and rise up to fight for your freedom. Together, we can win. All the inhabitants of Omicron are now awakened. The trusts have been destroyed. The last skirmishes are ending in the streets. We have had an extraordinary victory, which our descendants will recount from generation to generation, and we owe this victory to you, Nomad Soul. You helped us win back our freedom. For us all, you are now a legendary hero, like Kushalane before you. I shall try to take on material form again and leave this accursed network that has kept me prisoner for centuries. Thank you for all you have done for us, Nomad Soul. We'll never forget you. You have accomplished your destiny. Probably the strangest story you've ever heard. It's about two little men who live out in space. That's us, Ludmikron. <laughs> <laughs> now that's Omicron. He's from the planet Venus. And his name is Nudnikron. He's from Jupiter. And no one can understand the way they talk over there. And the Sputnik. We call them satellites. Yes, well, a Sputnik is a satellite. Now, the Sputnik is from still another planet. One we call Earth. One day, not so long ago, when no one was looking, Omicron and Nudnikron landed their tiny rocket ship on our planet Earth. They'd been sent here from space on an important secret mission. Funny, since Omicron is only the size of a soda pop bottle and the Nudnikron is shaped like a small orange egg. Stop where you are, Earthling! <laughs> oh dear, the grass is talking to me. <laughs> no, no. Why, no. <laughs> it's not the grass at all. It's a little orange egg. <laughs> Earthling, where is this Sputnik? Sputnik, Smutnik. Oh, I better get myself some new glasses. Well, the Nudnikron was not seriously hurt, so they continued to search the Earth for the Sputnik. After looking high and low for days, they'd almost given up. Then, as they were flying low over cold, snowy mountains on the other side of our world... Nudnikron! Nudnikron, look down there! There you go! That's a rocket! It's about to be shot into space! Down we go! And down they went! Omicron and the Nutnikron tiptoed into the laboratory where the scientists were getting ready the last piece to go into the rocket. Come on, let's hide inside this round metal ball here. Yep, so gilly -tow. We can watch them work through this little window and they won't see us. <laughs> oh, now, now, Igor. The Sputnik is ready. Oh, good, boss. Close the door and we will put it into the rocket. Aww. All righty, boss. <laughs> Nudnikron, we're locked in. This is the Sputnik. <laughs> and before they knew what had happened, they were hoisted into the air 
dropped in the nose of the rocket and... on their way into outer space. Now, of course, going into outer space was nothing new to Omicron and Nudnikron, but being locked tight inside a Sputnik was... No, no, France, no, Omicron! Servicar! Now, don't worry, Nudnikron. I'll get this door open in a little while, and we can jump. Our space parachutes will get us back to Earth all right. Lobophilio, yellow, yellow. Oh, the only thing I worry about is a wreck with one of our spaceships. So look. You go near that window over there and shout like a horn. Beep, beep. Yes, that's the way, and we'll warn any ships nearby, okay? Beep, beep. Yes, start now. Beep, beep. Beep, beep. Beep, beep. And beep, back beep. on Earth, as the anxious scientists listened to the Sputnik on the radio, what did they hear? Beep, beep. Beep, beep. Beep, beep. Why, why, Igor. It's ending cold. Yeah. But you and I know better now. It wasn't cold at all. It was... Omicron and not Omicron. It wants us to be its children. It wants us to be as it is. It wants us to let it into our world and to bring us into its world simultaneously. The closest thing it can do to mock 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. But they will fail if you hold fast to what you have and let no man deceive you. <laughs>